Hi, my name is Matt Nurmick. I'm owner and head instructor of Elite Defense Systems. What I'd like to cover today is, is three aspects of weapons self-defense. Now, please understand when we talk about weapons self-defense, we're talking about a very, very wide and broad category of different kinds of situations and scenarios. Um, what we're going to be doing specifically here in this video is, is covering weapon on weapon kind of self-defense. Therefore, not only does your opponent have a weapon, but you also have a weapon as well. First thing you have to understand in those kinds of situations is that we are probably going to have unequal kind of weapons, or at the very least, different kinds of weapons. In schools and academies, it's very, very tempting where if your partner picks up a stick, you go ahead and you just pick up a stick and now you stick fight. Or if they pick up a training knife, you pick up a training knife and now we just knife fight. That is important, don't get me wrong, but it's also just as important to make sure that we train with mixed weapons. What I want to do today is, is I want to go ahead and take a variety of different kinds of street farm weapons and mix them in with maybe some of the training weapons that we use in class as well. Now, the three aspects are as follows. The first thing is, is probably the most basic thing, and that is when you get to a weapon situation, we always want to try to defang the snake. And what that means is, is that if your partner or opponent is holding a weapon, we want to go ahead and we want to smack that hand or smack that arm. That is going to lead to a visceral response of dropping that weapon. Once our opponent drops that weapon or is disarmed, then we can go ahead and make a decision to either engage and follow up or simply leave the situation. The second kind of thing that I want to go ahead and point out to you is what's called objective. Now objective asks one question, do I go in or do I stay out? That is going to really depend on what kind of weapon you have compared to the kind of weapon that your opponent has. Now if you have the shorter weapon of the two, you want to go in. If you have the, let's say, longer weapon of the two, we obviously want to stay out. The third aspect is what we call environment. All environment says is, is that you have to pay attention to how the environment impacts the weapon they're playing with. If we, if we go ahead and let's say have a long broomstick and now we're in a narrow hallway or let's say a really tight washroom, that weapon is going to be limited some way. If on the other hand I have a small Swiss Army pocket knife and I'm defending myself in a wide uh, parking lot, open parking lot of some sort, I'm going to have to engage quite closely in order to really do any kind of damage and truly defend myself if that is what the case calls for. So we have to understand that you have to pay attention to those three aspects. Always the famous snake, pay attention to objective. Do I go in or do I stay out? And last but not least, how does the environment affect the kind of weapons that we're sparring or defending ourselves with? The one that I want to kind of expand upon right now is the whole aspect of objective. You have to understand that when we get into a real life altercation and all of a sudden somebody picks up a weapon or maybe they already have a weapon, we look around and we find whatever, that is random. I may not have 30 seconds or 60 seconds or even 5 minutes to find the exact weapon that my partner has or even a superior weapon, let's say. So what we have to understand is, is that objective asks that question, do I go in or do I stay out? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Joe come on out here with just a variety of weapons. I kind of want to quiz you right here. I want you to put yourself in my place and ask yourself this question. Would I go in holding the weapon that Matt is or would I stay out? Joe, just grab two kinds of uh, any kind of weapons and come on out here and hand me one, please. Now what we're going to do is, is once again, I want you to kind of almost play at home right now. So put yourself in my position right now. Would I go in with the weapon that I have compared to Joe's or would I stay out? Now if I go ahead and I have a staff, this is approximately about, you know, about a five foot staff or so, and let's say Joe has a folding chair of some sort, what would I do here? Do I want to go in or do I want to stay out? If we're way back here, so we have to have some distance right here, what would I do? Would I try to fend him off and stay to the outside, or would I somehow want to get to the inside? Well, as you can see right here, if Joe stands up his weapon against my weapon right here, you can see as far as distance-wise, his weapon is shorter than mine. My weapon has, you know, has to be longer. Therefore, what I want to do is, is stay out. If Joe has this weapon right here, I'm going to stay right out here, and I'm going to stay to the outside right here. If he comes on in, I want to keep him to the outside. Give me another two, please. 
Once again, ask yourself this question. Not only do I go in or do I stay out, but ask yourself another question. What would be my next move if this person would attack me? Here's another kind of, uh, different kinds of tools. But if I just have a big extension cord right here, and let's say Joe has a certain kind of a water jug, what would we do in this kind of situation right here? If we're fighting right here and kind of going around right here, do I want to go in or do I want to stay out? Well, we may use this weapon, you know, a little bit differently. This thing is all coiled up right here. Maybe we want to unplug it, get some distance right here. If I go ahead and I do that and I plug it right here, as I'm kind of moving around, let's say, I'm loosening this up, and now I got a little bit of distance right here. Who has a longer weapon? Well, obviously I do in this case. I once again want to stay on out. Now, if our roles are reversed right here, and I have the empty water jug, if you have a if you have a filled up water jug, your uh, your your strategy may be a little bit different. But if I have an empty water jug that I can curl around a little bit, now I need to get inside. So as he swings, I want to get inside right here and go ahead and make contact with this person. Now, in this case right here, you saw me go right for the face and not smack the hand. Something I want you guys to pay attention to is, are there certain kinds of exceptions? Maybe. That's up to you and that's up to the situation. Eight times or nine times out of ten, we want to go ahead and we want to smack that hand. If I, you know, if I went and let's say I had a stick or maybe a knife, I definitely want to cut one of those hands right there. Now he has to drop, you know, uh, wherever he's holding. He needs two hands, ideally, to fight with this kind of weapon right here, especially when he uncoils it. So I do want to smack the hand right here. In this case right here, it just seemed more sense to go ahead and smack the person right upside the head right here. But the point was what? I had to get inside first to do so. Give us two different kinds of weapons, please. So when you're doing this, please pay attention that you're asking yourself, not only do I go in or do I stay out, that covers objective, but then also what you're going to do when you get inside. Here's two more right here. Let's say I have a broom. And Joe has a knife. What do I do right here? Well, once again, I want to get maximum distance right here. Maybe I want to switch this around to have this side right here. Okay? But well, every time Joe comes in, I want to go ahead and I want to keep him off right here. Okay? If we would have switched right here, and now I have the shorter weapon, I want to make sure that when he swings, I go ahead and I get inside here and I take this guy out of commission. Where was my first cut? Right across the hand right here. So worst case scenario, I get this cut and now we fall that part. Now he can't defend himself properly because he only has one hand to handle a two-handed weapon. Let's go over two more kinds of scenarios right here. Once again, make sure you're quizzing yourself. Do you guys want to go in or do you guys want to stay out? Another combination that we have right here is, is we have a coat hanger. We were just joking before, it's like there's always coat hangers somewhere. All right, so a coat hanger might be a really good tool to, you know, to obviously uh, and, you know, train with right here. So we have a coat hanger right here up against just maybe a common stick. And who knows what the stick may represent? The stick may represent maybe a broken off leg from a table. Maybe this is going to represent a pipe. Who knows, okay, but it's a stick. Once I'm in right here, would I go in or would I stay out? Well, in this case, I obviously want to make sure that I go in. Joe has the longer of the two weapons right here. Therefore, when he goes ahead and swings, I'm smacking the hand and then going in and following up if I need to. Now remember, I have the option. If I smack that hand right there, bam! Okay, all right? Maybe we both get this up. When that happens in training, get right back to maybe your empty hand drills. You never know what's going to happen. Going back to our scenario right here. If I have a hanger and Joe has a stick right here, if I smack, boom, and he drops that weapon, if you can get out of the situation and leave it, please do. Let's go through one more kind of scenario, please. <clears throat> please pay attention that when you're training, things are going to happen that are not expected. I love those moments. As an instructor, I totally love when, let's say, two people are stick fighting and all of a sudden someone just loses their stick. Guess what? We don't take a time out. We keep on fighting. In this kind of situation right here, you know, if I was trying to get in some good training and I had, let's say, a coat hanger, and Joe, let's say, had a stick, and I was just assuming that I was going to smack his hand, he was going to let go, and I smack his hand, and all of a sudden I let go of my weapon accidentally, and he gets disarmed, 
Guess what? I just can't you know, go ahead and just say, okay, time out, I need to find my weapon right now. I need to engage this person right here. In that case, I'll get into close quarter, take this person out with my beloved elbow, knees, and headbutts. In this kind of situation right here, what's this? Well, it's a bulletin board. It could be a picture. Who knows? But if we have this right here, I most likely need two hands to maneuver this weapon around. Joe has a staff. This is a kind of a sticky kind of situation right here. What would I do in this kind of situation? Well, ideally what I'm going to do is I'm going to get inside, right? I'm pointing out these situations that may have exceptions, okay? So keep that in mind. As I go right here, I'm waiting for Joe to go ahead and to pass. I may smack the hand right here, maybe jab to the throat. I may, as that passes right here, I may smack the hand, come right down on the foot. Who knows what I may do, okay? There's a whole plethora of follow-ups that we can do. What I want you guys to pay attention to is the fact of that we have a bunch of variety of options that we can go ahead and use, but it still falls back to our three fundamental things. Once again, defang the snake. Objective, do I go in or do I stay out? And what kind of environment okay, uh, that I'm in affects what kind of weapon that I'm holding or even my opponent holding, you know, is holding. Realize that if you know that if your environment that you're in is going to affect the kind of weapon that your opponent has, well, all the better for you. You have more knowledge in that kind of situation. And that knowledge is going to pay off.